Hi, my name is Regina Garanella, and I'm a senior economics major from here in Norman, Oklahoma, and I'm the SOA business team leader this semester. And my name is Bailey Hollingsworth. I am a sophomore computer science student who is the team lead for the development of SOA. And this semester, we had the opportunity to work with Ross Basin Rent, a startup by Sydney Calgary, uh, which aims to be the Airbnb platform of the event. So this semester on the business team, I've had the chance to work with four incredibly talented, hilarious, and passionate individuals. We've had a ridiculous number of 7 a.m. meetings, and some even at Old School Beagle Cafe, and we've shared our love over the delicacy of torches tacos. You can't tell we really love them. Um, <laughs> we also uh, have gone over our love for couches and sofas, and even held a wake for storage markets. We've had an incredible amount of fun this semester, but fret not, this team has put an incredible amount of effort into this project, and I can't wait for you all to see it. And this semester, I was given four of the most talented developers I know. We've spent over 30 dinners together. Uh, we've spent over 50 hours sitting on the couches writing thousands of lines of code to bring to life an application that City Concrete so much deserves. Finally, we'd like to thank our inventor, Sydney Conbury, our mentor, Claire Robinson, the team at Innovation to Enterprise, the amazing staff at ICCW, and our software development instructor, Jake Manning. And finally, we'd like to thank our phenomenally fearless fellow, Patrick Richardson. I'd like to thank you all for showing up today. This team has put in a lot of effort, and I hope you guys are excited to see it. And with that, I will come out Team Ross Facebook. graduate planning to propose to your longtime girlfriend. You've got the ring, you know what you're going to say, you just need to figure out the best location to actually do it. You've looked all over the internet, you've talked to friends, but you can't find anything that fits the space that you're looking for. Everything is too big, it's too expensive, or it's just not the type of space that you want for this special day. Across town, there's actually a small coffee shop that has a back patio that's small and perfect for your, perfect for your occasion. But unfortunately, you won't be able to get access to this place because the event owner doesn't have the money to advertise and get his name out there. These are the types of problems that our inventor, Cindy Conbury, was thinking of when she came up for, with Ross Space for Rent, a shared economy platform that allows listeners who have a space to connect to users who need to utilize this space. This semester, our team has been, plan has been working on a business plan for growth and development of Ross Space for Rent, as well as developing an iOS application to keep it competitive with the current players in the market. We have also been working in conjunction with Innovation to Enterprise in their Venture Assessment Program to identify target markets and have actually narrowed our focus from four initial markets to the smaller event venue marketplace. In doing so, we've identified a market with nearly 45 million events per year and the possibility of making over $1.2 million over the course of the next three years through its existing business model as well as additional revenue streams. We've conducted over 100 phone calls and interviews and have issued a survey with nearly 200 respondents in doing our research. Hi, I'm Blake Saylor, petroleum engineering senior from Edmond, Oklahoma. My name is Valerie Pham. I'm a computer science freshman from here in Norman, Oklahoma. I'm Hussein Ramsey. I'm a junior major in chemical class sciences from Oklahoma City. I'm Edie McCready. I'm a senior pursuing dual degrees in advertising and management from Wayne, Texas. My name is Justin Potts. I'm a management information systems major from Oklahoma, Texas. Our team leaders are Rajutha Garamella and Bailey Hollingsworth. Our inventor is Cindy Convery. Our mentor is Claire Robinson from Innovation to Enterprise. Our fellow is Patrick Richardson. And along with Nick Graham, Dragon Tran, and Andrew Schaefer, we are Team Sofa. In the current event venue marketplace, there are often problems allowing renters and listeners to meet each other in the best way possible. Renters sometimes have problems finding these best fit venues and listeners typically have problems connecting with their target audience. This is where Ross Space for Rent comes in. As a shared economy platform functioning on the same principles as companies like Uber, Airbnb, and Lyft, Ross Space for Rent has two separate parties. A one party that has a good or service, in our case, the listeners, and another party that needs to utilize this good or service, in our case, the renters. Ross Space for Rent consolidates these two parties into one centralized location centralized location in order to make the process as easy as possible. But how does Ross Space actually help solve the problems that these parties have? We set ourselves apart from the competitors 
by focusing on the specific needs that both the renters and the listers have. On the renter side, they typically do have problems finding these best fit venues. Since they're smaller and don't have uh, as much exposure, they don't get, get as much name recognition to get their name out there through word of mouth. On the venue side, these venues have difficulty connecting with their target audience. They are just too small and don't have the amount of exposure that they need to connect with these groups of people. Crossface Sprint solves this by consolidating available event venues into one centralized location. In our survey, we actually found that 59% of respondents would be interested in using a service like Crossface Sprint to plan their events, which validated our ideas. Also, we found these venues uh, typically have problems with being underutilized. Most of them are only being utilized around 50% of the time, which results in a massive loss of potential revenue for these spaces. They don't have enough people booking them and need to find additional ways to get these renters to use their space. Crossbase Rent helps to solve this by allowing these companies to be listed on the, on the Crossbase page free of charge. Um, Crossbase only operates on a commission-based model, meaning that when these spaces are booked, that's the only time that they do incur a charge. If they wish to get their name out there and get a little bit more exposure, they can pay a small fee to be a featured listing, but this isn't something that's required for these spaces. So now that I've told you a little bit about raw space and the problems that it seeks to solve, I'm gonna hand it off to Valerie to show you a little bit of what the development team has made. Thank you, Blake. As mentioned, the development team has been working on building an app that supplements Crossbase for its current website and services. Now, when a user first enters the app, they'll be greeted by a home page. This home page contains a carousel featuring featured listings, which the user can slide through. If we scroll down, we'll see that the page also contains groups of listings that are categorized by the kind of spaces they are. Additionally, the app also features a search bar user interface, which when tapped, we'll see allows users to search by city, state, the type of event, price range, and through location services, distance and miles from the user. All of these search criteria are left optional for the user to fill. For example, let's say that I'm a user that's looking for a loft to host an event that's within Oklahoma. All I have to do is fill in the state tab, fill in the event tab, type of event tab, and with tab search, it'll bring me up all loft listings within Oklahoma. From here, if I find what I'm interested in, such as this film or loft, I can tap on it. Tapping on it will bring up a listing page which contains a description of the space, the price, reviews and ratings, buttons to fade the space and message the lister, as well as a map that showcases the location of the space. If I'm interested in renting this loft, I can press reserve. This will bring up a reservation calendar where I can select dates for when I'd like to rent the space. And from here, I can press request reservation. This will bring me up a payment confirmation page where I can input my payment information as well as view the breakdown of the payment. And finally, with the press of reserve, it'll bring me up a notification letting me know that my request for the reservation has been made. Overall, designing the app was made to be user-friendly through very interactive user interfaces, as well as providing up a simple user experience through implementations such as a single search page. Now that I've told you a little bit of the app, I'll pass it to you soon to tell you more about other services along the app that Raw Space will be enhancing. Thanks, Valerie. <laughs> So alongside this brilliant iOS application, Rockspace Rent needs to implement a few additional services to not only further enhance user experience, but also um, solve some problems that current customers face on other event venue platforms. They will do this by adopting a personalized recommendation system alongside using 360 degree cameras in advertising their spaces. So in our conversation with various potential customers, they expressed to us that they sometimes overlook having to get a service like a caterer or DJ in the rush of actually getting the event. And sometimes they have an issue visualizing the space solely based on 2D images. This limits how they can actually plan the events, and if it's out of state, they can actually visit the space. But with these two additional services, it averts all these challenges. With the recommendation system, it uses a questionnaire to both the lister and the renter, and from what they like such, it would ask such things as what kind of what event they're holding, their price range, what they're looking for. It would then recommend to them a list of services such as DJs or caterers from our strategic partnership system that both I and Justin will touch on momentarily. With the camera, it gives the renter a more powerful tool than say 2D images to not only help visualize the center that they're trying to book, but help them plan the events and kind of visit the space without actually visiting the space. And all of this gives them a competitive edge in entering the if Rossby Sprint is to adopt these additional services, 
that would give, it would, it would give them a, a competitive edge in entering the larger nationwide event venue market. Which brings us to our competitors. Ross Place Rent is entering a larger market, but it sets us off apart in a very few important metrics. First and foremost, the market we're targeting is different than that of our competitors. There are a few that operate specifically on the coast, and a few that operate nationwide, <coughs> but those that operate, operate nationwide are kind of dispersed and, and diluted in the main Midwest and Southwest region of the United States, which is an untapped market for Ross Place Rent to enter. We also are going for more affordable um, venues, as opposed to our, say, our competitors like Splacer, we actually have spaces, spaces curated by architects, and peer space, which has spaces varying in price from $10,000 to over $20,000 per hour for a venue. And our next metric actually goes back to a conversation we had with a, a mid-events venue in Lafayette, Louisiana. They expressed to us that they have a fear of sometimes going to the digital venues of overbooking themselves, but with lost space rent, this isn't the case. Because of the presence of the bookings calendar on our application, it gives the peace of mind to the listener that they won't be overbooked, while also giving the freedom of choosing what date you want to book the events to the renter themselves. And last but not least, Ross Space Rent should look into gaining strategic partnerships in a way manner similar to that of Peerspace. Peerspace offers a concierge service that, um, based on what the renter wants, offers this thing up to them. With Ross Space Rents, by partnering up with local businesses such as caterers or florists or DJs, it would then recommend these services to the customer to better enhance their user experience. And all of this will put Ross Place Rent in a better position to then capture and protect the markets in the Midwest and Southwest region of the United States. With more of these markets, here's Evie. Thank you, Jason. So, Ross Place has the potential to capture a $125 million segment of the $4.9 billion party in events industry, which currently holds about $1.8 billion in its creator. This market is currently segmented by the type of events hosted in the United States each year, between corporate social events, weddings, parties, and other smaller scale events, such as meetings, lunches, or small parties like bridal and baby showers. When we first started looking at this market, we began by talking to event players. We found that the corporate events market has a very specific and systematic way that they go about planning their events that Rockspace does not currently cater to, meaning that this would not be a viable market for Rockspace to pursue for, the, for events. Additionally, we spoke specifically to wedding planners and future brides and found that the wedding market is oversaturated with similar services that cater specifically to the needs of these brides. And that there was limited interest in using an additional service like Rossface in this market as well. However, in our survey, we have 59% of respondents say that they would be interested in using a service like Rossface to help them plan these other parties and smaller scale events. In addition to the type of event, there are three key factors that determine venue selection. And these are cost, location, and flexibility of space. Looking first at cost, there is a direct relationship between the cost and the capacity of a venue. In the, in the, in the events in the United States, the majority of events, over 70% of them, have a capacity of less than 250 people. So by focusing on these smaller event venues, Rossface can meet the needs of its potential users for both cost and capacity. As we say mentioned previously, Rossface is looking to focus on that Midwest and Southwest market that is previously that is currently untapped by competitors and still makes up approximately 33% of the total U.S. population. Finally, by focusing on spaces that can serve multiple purposes, raw space can meet the diverse needs of the various types of events that potential uses will throw. These could be spaces like a coffee shop with a back porch in Oklahoma City that could be used for both lunches or small parties, or an art gallery that can be used for receptions or to show off students' artwork. By looking at this niche market of these specific types of venues, as well as looking at the success of competitors and projecting that based on our spaces own interviews, and looking at the reception that we've received from conversations with potential with potential venues, we calculated that Rossface can expect to capture 3% of this overall party and events market, which includes approximately 45 million events per year. In order to best capture this, Rossface needs a strategic marketing plan. We also calculated that raw space needs to be in approximately 50 venues in 50 cities with 5,000 active users per city by the end of year three, which is, which is why this marketing plan is crucial to maintain this type of rapid growth and development. The plan is divided between the two stakeholder groups, listers and renters. On the lister side of things, it uses three touch points in order to build a direct relationship with those potential listers and is estimated to cost about $2,000 per city based on the 10% reception rate that we found in our initial interviews. On the renter side of things, it increases the number of touch points in order to maintain engagement throughout the year. 
And initially, cities will cost about $20,000 per city as raw space can throw events to better educate potential consumers on the types of things that raw space can provide. And that will decrease to about $5,000 per city per city later on as it just as raw space ha is able to maintain that traction from those initial cities. In order to tell you a little bit more about how these two key groups can also generate revenue for raw space, there's Justin. Raw Space's business model is similar to other shared economy platforms, and that will take a commission from both the lister as well as the renter. Currently, it's 5% from, from both of these, totaling 10% overall. But in order to raise revenue, Raw Space should raise this to 7.5% from, from both parties. And through our research and talks with listers, this 7.5% is on average with what other shared economy platforms are doing, and the event spaces would be more than happy to pay this increased commission totaling 15% overall. Now, we recognize that operating off of a commission-based model alone isn't enough for raw space to reach its revenue goals, which is why as a team, we've come up with three additional streams of revenue that can help grow raw space even more. The first being strategic partnerships. Like Hussein mentioned, these strategic partnerships can include anyone from DJs to caterers to decorators, or maybe even an event club. These strategic partners would pay a fixed monthly rate almost as a way of advertising on the site. And unlike the venues, they would operate 100% of the revenue that they earn would go to them rather than commission model. Additionally, raw space can implement on-site advertising, which can generate over $130,000 over three years. The benefit of the cost per impression model that we recommend raw space implements is that the more site, the more active users and the more site traffic that raw space generates, the higher this revenue will become and the more raw space is going to grow. Lastly, raw space should implement featured listings. Featured listings are similar to strategic partners in that listings can advertise on the site and increase engagement and separate themselves from the rest of the venues on the site based on certain categories that they are a part of. These featured listings would cost $10 per month for each menu that decides to join us to join the system. With all of these streams of revenue, Raw Space can expect to break even in the middle of year two and generate over $1.2 million over the next three years. This is based off of three key assumptions that we use doing our research and modeling in our financial model. The first being that site traffic is growing at a rate of 10% month over month which is consistent with other shared economy platforms on the web today. Second is that each active user books on average two times per year, rather than larger venues where the users may only book once per year or once every two years, Raw Space can enjoy this two times a year booking because of the types of venues that we're offering, like small venues and small venue spaces. Lastly, Raw Space needs to be in 50 available, 50 cities and 50 available venues in each city, totaling 2,500 venues over three years. However, to get to this $1.2 million, there are some costs that Raw Space will incur. The biggest being advertising costs for both the renters and the listeners. The biggest is $325,000 for the renter listings. Like Evie mentioned, this includes hosting events to spread awareness and to increase engagement on the site. The next is $200,000 for the lister advertising, which will also help spread awareness and get new users onto raw space. And the last is $70,000 in development costs for a full-time developer to come on and help raw space implement new features and the new additional streams of revenue, like featured listings, advertising, and strategic partnerships. For this, for raw space, Raw Space needs to offset these costs by raising $250,000 from an angel investor. To help Cindy do this, we're working on gathering a list of potential investors that Cindy can reach out to, to help in, so she can better know who can help become a part, who can help Raw Space grow into its next job. Additionally, Raw Space needs to implement its marketing plan so that it can grow to its maximum potential and increase its revenue. On the development side, Raw Space needs to finish the mobile application and integrate this into the website, as well as integrate the additional streams of code. Over the past few months, the development team has been hard at work, completing a working mobile application. We've also been hard at work doing a make, putting together a detailed marketing plan that Cindy can take to help grow the platform. And through this, 
the city can generate $1.2 million over the next three years. Thank you so much for coming out. We'd love to open the floor to questions, and we would love for you to test that out in the library after this.